off. Okay, I love you too. Today on KUJH News, thunderstorms approach Lawrence when the rain will begin to affect your Friday fun. Walter Cronkite, Bob Woodward, and now Bob Dotson, recipients of the William Allen White Award. I try never to overlook the small things in life. They could lead to something big. How his American story has sent him around the globe. Plus, Football touches down on campus, a preview of tomorrow's spring game. KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Mary Kate Baker. With possible storms moving in, let's go to Nick Price for a look at the weather. Nick? Thanks, Mary-Kate. We are expecting a lot of rain tonight throughout the Lawrence area. Storms are forming over western Kansas right now around the Salina area, and they're sweeping across the plains pretty quickly. We can expect that rain to hit us at around 7 o'clock tonight, and then heavier thunderstorms are going to roll in about an hour after that. Now, the heavy storms are expected throughout the night until about 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So if you are planning on attending the spring football game, you should be in the clear. We'll have a little bit more coming up for your weekend weather. Thank Thanks, Nick. The KU Public Safety Office crime report says sexual offenses at KU were down in 2014. The latest KU crime report says seven sexual offenses compared to nine in 2013. Three of those cases were rapes, three cases of fondling, and one case of sodomy. Overall, 834 crimes reported in 2014, an increase of 24% from the previous year. Violent crime only accounted for about 1%. IOA received 120 complaints in 2014. These include sexual assault complaints. Two organizations will host an event to raise awareness about sexual assault. April 30th, Lawrence will host a Take Back the Night rally at 7 p.m. starting at the Kansas Union. The Solidarity March starts at the Union and goes to the South Park. There will be guest speakers in a community rally. The first successful treatment for Ebola may have been found by researchers in Texas. Coming after the Ebola cases last summer, the treatment has made its way through animal testing. Researchers say this treatment is more efficient and works quicker than others. Chief Medical Officer of the University of Kansas Hospital, Dr. Lee Norman, says this is different than other treatments. They've received uh, experimental antibodies produced in the tobacco plant um, and some other kinds of treatments. There's been vaccines out there, but none of these have been tested in a scientific method to know is it any better than what just their good medical intensive care would have been even without it. Researchers are waiting to test treatment in humans. Kansas lawmakers return to Topeka Wednesday is on, their, on their agenda, a deal that could affect by financial aid. Grants to students. Right now, public and private university students get 50% of almost $16 million of the state's need-based aid. The current budget bill would change that to 40% to public schools and 60% to private. This means about 945 public school students could lose their grants. That's more than 200 KU students. Without the comprehensive grants, I would not be here. I would not be probably at any other education system. Um, I might be at some sort of community college, possibly. Uh, but even then, I would have to work twice as hard to get half as much money to end up going somewhere I really didn't like. Budget negotiations continue April 29th. Students across the, the country can now earn a Master of Business Administration from KU, all online. The program will open in fall 2015. The total estimated cost for the degree comes in just about under $30,000. The program requires 42 credit hours and is designed for a two-year completion. Enrollment is now open. You can apply at onlinemba.ku.edu. A bicycle company recalls nearly 1 million bikes. Trek bicycles made between 2000 and 2015 are recalled due to a faulty quick release lever on the front tire. Bike stores that sell the Trek bikes around Lawrence are affected. However, Lawrence Recyclery says the problem could be avoided with proper bike care. You know, if you align the skewer with the fork the way it should be aligned, you wouldn't ever have a problem in the first place. So 
again, it just goes back to what I would consider operator error more than a defect on the part itself. If you have a Trek bike made from 2000 to 2015, you can contact the Trek Safety and Recall Hotline at 800-373-4593. Again, that number is 800-373-4593. With those possible severe thunderstorms tonight, but will that stay over the weekend? Nick Price has your forecast. Nick. Thanks, Mary Kate. Now, if we're looking here, we have a shot. This is live outside of the end and family football complex. As you can see, it's a little gloomy. Wind is starting to pick up. Overall, that's a little telltale sign of those signs or of those storms that are coming in rather. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what your forecast looks like for tomorrow. In the morning, 7 a.m., 75% chance of rain. Those thunderstorms, like I said earlier, rolling in, but they should be over by 8 or 9 o'clock. So by noon, 10% chance of rain, 65 degrees, and the wind's going to pick up for that spring game. So keep an eye on that. And then in the evening at 6 o'clock, 64 degrees, no rain in sight. Now let's look at the rest of the weekend for you. And throughout the rest of the weekend, it's going to be pretty nice out. Saturday, like I said, high of 68, 20% chance of rain in the morning. Sunday is 65, partly cloudy with a 10% chance of rain, and then no rain in sight on Monday. 67 degrees and partly cloudy. Going to be a beautiful start to the week. Back to you, Mary-Kate. Thanks, Nick. We now have Matt Kaufman joining us with sports. So, okay, Matt, looks like we're in the clear with uh, weather for the spring game tomorrow. Yeah, we do have some inclement weather heading our way, but it doesn't sound like it's going to affect the spring game too much. <laughs> Coming up next in sports, the 2015 Kansas spring football game kicks off tomorrow. Plus... Tempers flared in Chicago last night between the Royals and the White Sox. I don't think they were exchanging pleasantries. Stay with us. Now they're beating us on the boards out there, guys. This is your territory, Grimson. Do your job. Grimson. Hello? Hi, honey. What? Now? Alright. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Hey, it's my girl. You know, my daughter. Love. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Hey, check it out. When it gets cold, feels like the end. There's no place to go, you know I won't give in. No, I won't give in. The weather won't be the only thing making noise this weekend. The Kansas football team is set to play its annual spring game on Saturday. Josh Kerlack is live outside the Kansas football practice facility. Josh? As you can see behind me, the Jayhawks have taken the practice field for what will be the final time before tomorrow's spring game. Head coach David Beatty and his staff have given this Kansas program a facelift. The Jayhawks implemented a fast-paced air raid offense this past month. They even let students watch practice yesterday. And during most practices, the offense runs about 80 to 100 plays. And for a group that isn't used to such a rapid pace, the transition has been difficult. Where I came from, my junior college, where I came from, my junior college, we had no tempo. Like, we'd run a play, you know, get to the line, look around. Here, you know, it's constantly, you know, hurry, hurry. And you're just looking to the side, it's hurry, hurry. Trying to catch your breath at the same time, you know, it's, it's, it's been real, you know. We'll get a first chance glance to look at how this team responds to game-like situations tomorrow. Kickoff is scheduled for 1 p.m. Reporting outside of Memorial Stadium, Josh Kerlack, KUJH Sports. Thanks, Josh. On to baseball. The Kansas baseball team hits the road to Morgantown this weekend for a three-game series against West Virginia. The Jayhawks have faced the Mountaineers eight times going back to 2013, with each team taking four games apiece. 
The first game of the series is today at 5 o'clock. The second game is Saturday at 3. The final game of the series is Sunday at noon. If the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight is the main event, the Royals and the White Sox are making their case to be a good undercard. Says something to Eaton before throwing over to first. The last half inning came to an end. The Royals and White Sox were screaming at each other. Tempers flared last night in the seventh inning. Royal starting pitcher Jordano Ventura yelled at the White Sox's Adam Eaton while throwing him out at first. This triggers a bench clearing brawl near first base and let the games begin. Five players were ejected, including the Royals Ventura, Edinson Volquez, and Lorenzo Kane. Including the three who were tossed Thursday, the Royals lead the majors this season with nine players ejected. This is the second straight start Ventura has been ejected. The second game of the series is tonight with first pitch set for 7-10. No word yet on when first punches are set for. Coming off a sixth place finish at the Hawkeye Invitational in Iowa last weekend, the Kansas men's golf team now looks ahead to the Big 12 Championship next week in Tulsa. Coach Jamie Bermel says he likes his team's chances on what will be a difficult course. What we need to be concerned about is our own play. Um, if we go down there and do the little things right, um, prevent the big numbers because they're a very difficult golf course, uh, I think we, can, uh, we have a chance to do okay. The Big 12 Championship starts Monday and runs through Wednesday. The KU women's tennis team finished its season in Waco, Texas this morning at the Big 12 Championship, falling to third-ranked Oklahoma State. The Cowgirls swept Kansas 4-0, advancing to the semifinals. KU finishes this season with an 8-15 record. Okay, well, that looks pretty exciting for the women's tennis coming up. So, and yesterday, we actually had someone very special on KU's campus. Bob Dotson, right? You're so right. Mm -hmm. Were you able to meet him at all? You know, I actually did. He came and spoke to two of my classes. It was just so cool to have a legend on KU's campus. I'm so I got to shake his hand very briefly, but coming up next on KUJH News. And got on the local campus radio station and the rest is history. The man behind the American story and his journey from KU to NBC. What's, what's when KUJH return, returns? Well, you're wrong. I'm wrong? You're the one who misrepresented the facts. I misrepresented the facts. Are you kidding? Your proposal is ridiculous. You have no right to call oh, You are the everybody. worst example of Nick, politics. I stand for you're something. Flip-flop. I stand for something. Flip-flop or flip-flop. Your proposal is ludicrous. My proposal ludicrous. will go exactly the way I say oh, it will. Oh, my dead body. I think somebody needs a timeout. That's the power of one. I motion that I be issued the timeout and... Wow, me too. Yeah, for sure, you should get a timeout. I apologize. And I motion that we, uh, I, start showing more respect. Civility. Pass it on. So Matt, the legendary Bob Dotson, he received an award. The William Allen White Citation Award. Yes. The former KU Jayhawk has worked for the Today Show for 40 years. Dotson talked with recipients of journalism awards and scholarships last night. KUJH Thomas Hoppo and Hank Cavanero give us a little background on the living legend. At 68, Bob Dotson is still doing what he loves and he's teaching the next generation at the NPPA News Video Workshop. I always start from the fact that I, nobody cares about this story. And then that forces me, hey, you see so, to find out how I can get people to care about it. Bob's journey to where he is now was unexpected. Sometimes you don't know where you're going until you get there. With today's American story with Bob Dotson, it comes from a forest in Maine that's filled with surprises. Bob Dotson, one of the greatest storytellers of our generation, didn't know where he was going. I try never to overlook the small things in life. They could lead to something big. Who is Bob Dotson? Uh, he's a Midwestern guy that got lucky. His grandfather from Hiawatha, Kansas, and a graduate from KU, brought him to campus. He said, see that statue? I said, yes, sir. That's Uncle Jimmy Green. Who? He's the first dean of the law school. I knew him before he was a statue. 
and you ought to come here. Dotson came to KU to become a lawyer. But of course, I got interested in journalism and got on the local campus radio station and the rest is history. So the local radio station, like KJHK? Well, in those days it was called KUOK, or Quack. <laughs> Dotson fell in love with journalism. Uh, I got hooked on the fun and the challenge of taking what seems to be ordinary and try to make it come alive and give my reader or my viewer a chance to experience, not just to show or tell, but to experience what I had experienced. He is storytelling. Nate said these creatures so filled his heart, he felt compelled to give them life. Because he captures people's memorable moments in a span of two minutes. Gathered by hand, six days a week, for 60 years. Now why would you buy four peelers if they last a lifetime? Because you've got four friends, that's why. Even in broadcasting with its limited time, especially these days, you know, where everything is a, a tweet or it's a six-second vine, what have you. It's no excuse for not telling a story. For instance, I asked a reporter the other day what was the last thing she tweeted, and she said the suspect went into the mall and bought a green sweater. And I said, all right, same number of letters. Honey, the gutter ain't a step up from you. Now, which one's a story? He's won hundreds of awards, eight Emmys, five Edward R. Murrow Awards. Now he's being presented the William Allen White Citation. And to have an honor like that, I mean, I feel like I ought to call my wife and say, I'm not taking the garbage out anymore. Don't you understand? I am somebody. <laughs> Probably still going to have to take it out, though, right? I, 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 absolutely, yeah. Dotson's career began at a little station at KU called Quack. After hundreds of stories, just as many places, and remarkable people throughout his career, Bob is still not done. What was your favorite story you ever told? The next one. Dotson, an inspiration to all. Hopefully in our lifetime, we're still doing what we love. The desire every morning when you wake up to make yourself one of a kind will get you closer to having a happy life. I mean, everything I've told you could be wrong, so keep that in mind. For photojournalist Hank Cavagnaro, I'm Thomas Hoppe, KUJH News. Wow, what a special treat to have Bob Dotson on KU campus. Seriously, one of the cooler things I've ever experienced in my time here at KU. Yeah, it's amazing. He's just such a great storyteller. I asked him how the trip in was, and he had me on the edge of my seat. So it was really cool. Just uh, as young journalists, just really cool experience. Definitely. Well, thanks so much for joining us. That's all the time we have for today. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at KUJHTV. Have a good night.